Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing diabetic uh, retinopathy. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the structure of the retina. Okay, so we've drawn these pictures of what you see when you uh, use an ophthalmoscope to look at the back of the eye. So basically, two important landmarks that you see are the optic disc, which is very medial, and then the macule, which is a little bit more lateral, okay, and the macule contains the fovea. Now, the fovea is the portion of the retina that has the highest visual acuity, okay, so its ability to do uh, resolve an image to see in detail is much greater than the other portions of the retina, which is why if you want to read something, you look directly at it. You don't read something out of the corner of your eye, and the reason is that the other if you read it out of the corner of your eye, you're basically using a portion of the retina that has lower visual acuity than the fovea, whereas when you look at it directly, basically you're making sure that the image is on your fovea, okay, so you're using the portion that has the highest visual acuity to do this task that requires high visual acuity. Okay, so uh, that's what you see if you use an ophthalmoscope. What we now want to discuss is the more in-detailed structure of the retina, okay? So, basically, what we're now going to do is imagine removing a slice of retina, and what we're going to do is look at its structure from the most peripheral portion, which is in contact with the choroid, to the most inner portion, which is in contact with the vitreous chamber. So, we will have the inner portion as the top portion, so the bit that faces into the vitreous humor will be uh, the innermost portion, and we'll have the portion that faces out towards the choroid as the most outer portion, and it will be down here. Okay, right. So the first layer then of the retina uh, consists of something known as the re retinal pigment epithelium. Okay, and uh, these are retinal pigment cells, and these are very, very important uh, in seeing, basically, in vision. They recycle the retinal pigment, okay? So when light uh, hits the eye, basically it breaks down the retinal pigment, and this triggers a whole signaling cascade that, is then, that then leads to um, uh, an electrical signal in the rod and cone cells but they need the retinal pigment regenerated and they send it basically to the retinal pigment epithelium to be regenerated. So these cells are not trivial basically. So we'll have a few of them here. I'll give them all nuclei because they're so important. So here we have the retinal pigment epithelium. And this image is probably going to end up being quite squashed, but never mind. So this is retinal pigment epithelium. And that's not gonna fit in that line retinal pigment epithelium. And for short, the retinal pigment epithelium is often denoted as the RPE for short. So this is usually called R for retinal, P for pigment, and then E for epithelium. Okay, so RPE is the same thing as the retinal pigment epithelium. Okay, so let's talk about the next layer of cells that are up from the retinal pigment epithelium. Okay, so then come the photoreceptors, and this is what everyone always finds strange about the retinas, uh, but sorry, about the retina. Um, basically, the cells which actually detect the light are right at the bottom of the retina, so all the light has to go through a huge number of other layers before it actually gets to the photoreceptors. So it seems a little bit upside down, basically. You'd think that the photoreceptors would need to be right at the top, uh, so that they were basically facing right into the vitreous humor, but they're actually right at the bottom. So there are two types of photoreceptors, rod cells and cone cells. And rod cells are called rod cells because the actual portion that detects the light is in the shape of a rod, and cone cells are called cone cells because the portion which detects the light is in the shape of a cone. So we'll have a mixture of them in here. So here's another rod cell. Well, this isn't the full um, rod or cone cell yet. These are just the rod and the cones of the rod, cones and cone cells. We'll see where the cell bodies of the rod and cone cells are at the moment. Okay, so this layer would be called the layer of rods and cones. So these are the rods and cones. And I think I might color them in, okay, to try and make the image a little bit uh, easier on the eyes. So we'll color in uh, the cones in green. Okay, so here's a cone in green. 
and we'll colour in the rods in red. Okay, so here's another cone in green, and I might just go to sort of hashing it rather than um, colouring it in completely. So here's a co uh, rod rather in red. Okay, like so. And um, let me just sort something out on the computer. Right, onwards we go. Right, so uh, here's another rod here in red. And now, basically, we'll look at the rest of these um, retinal photoreceptors. So these are just the rods and the cones. Basically, the photoreceptor needs a cell body and then it needs a, an axon, basically. Okay, so what happens is... Firstly, you have an important membrane here, which I'm just going to talk about, known as the external limiting membrane, and I'll put this in in blue here. Now, we're not going to be too interested in the external limiting membrane in diabetic retinopathy, uh, but we are going to be incredibly interested in the internal limiting membrane. But for completeness of the structure of the retina, we need to put this external limiting membrane here. Okay, and then basically the uh, processes of the rods and the cones are below the external limiting membrane, whereas the actual cell body, uh, cell bodies of the rods and the cones are uh, inwards of the uh, external limiting membrane, so they're uh, beyond the external limiting membrane. Okay, so here then we have uh, the cell body of our rod here. Here we have the cell body of this cone, the cell body of this uh, rod here, the cell body of this cone is here, and the cell body of this rod is here. Okay, so we have a layer then of cell bodies, and this is what's known as the outer nuclear layer. So remember, this is the outside, this is the inside. So this is the outermost uh, nuclear layer that you have basically in the retina. Okay, so this is the outer nuclear layer. Okay, and it contains uh, the cell bodies of um, the uh, photoreceptors, basically. Now what will happen is the photoreceptors will then have processes going off to synapse with the next cells along. Okay, so here are their processes going off up here. And basically, they will be synapsing with the next cells along. And the next cells along are things known as bipolar neurons. So let's have a look at these bipolar neurons then now. So let's put a bipolar neuron here. We'll have the cell bodies of the bipolar neurons here. So I'll put five bipolar neurons, one for each of the photoreceptors. And we'll have nuclei in these. Okay. And then, uh, basically, um, what's going to happen is they will send processes to synapse with the processes of um, the um, photoreceptors down here. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to have to make... Um, squash the rest of it in now because I've made this layer so big here. Never mind. So this layer where we, which contains the processes of the uh, photoreceptors and the processes of the bipolar neurons, this is known as the outer plexiform layer. So there are no cell bodies here. It's just processes, basically. It's just axons and dendrites. So outer plexiform layer. Okay, right. And then we have another cell layer, which is the cell layer containing all the cell bodies of uh, the bipolar neurons, okay? And this is what's known as the inner nuclear layer. So this is called the inner nuclear layer. So we've had the outer nuclear layer, and now we've had the inner nuclear layer, which is closer to the um, vitreous humor, basically, inner nuclear layer. Right, then the bipolar neurons are going to send their message on, so they will now have an axon which will go on to synapse with the next cell along, and I'm going to have to make these processes much smaller just to fit this in now. Okay, so here are the little axons of the bipolar neurons. Okay, and I just want to label one of these up as a bipolar neuron. So this is a bipolar neuron. Okay, and then the next cell along is what's known as a ganglion cell. So let me put these ganglion cells here. And again, I'm only putting them so close just because we're running out of space, basically. So the next cells are ganglion cells. And they will have processes which will synapse uh, with the axons coming from the bipolar neurons. Okay, so here we go. So, this next layer of processes from the um, bipolar neurons meeting processes from the ganglion cells, this is then called the inner 
plexiform layer. So remember we've had the outer plexiform layer, we've now got the inner plexiform layer. So we've got nuclear layers and plexiform layers. Okay, and then finally what will happen is these ganglion cells, which I'll now give nuclei here. Okay, and I'll label them up as well, I think. So these are ganglion cells. They will then uh, give off axons, and those axons will run to the optic nerve, basically, and they carry the signal for quite some time now. Okay, so their axons will certainly leave the eye, basically. Okay, so off we'll go there, axons. I'll put this here. Okay, so here we have axon after axon after axon running off maybe to um, the optic disc, and that all of them will run towards the optic disc. And then this layer of axons up here is known as the nerve fiber layer. Okay, so this is the nerve fiber layer layer. And then above the nerve fiber layer, you then have the internal limiting membrane. And I'll color this in blue again, because this is going to be important in diabetic retinopathy. Okay, so here, this is the internal limiting membrane in blue here. So the internal limiting membrane. Okay, right. So we now need to discuss um, where the arterioles and the venules are within the retina. Okay, so basically you have arterioles and venules in both this nerve fiber there that's just underneath the internal limiting membrane, and you also have them in the inner plexiform layer, so they're towards the inner aspect of the retina overall. Okay, so let's put some of these in. So here is an arteriole, let's say, here is a venule, let's have an arteriole and a venule here as well. So I'll colour them in red and blue. So this is an arteriole in red, okay, and this is a venule in blue. Okay, so the microvasculature within the retina is going to be very, very important within diabetic retinopathy. So the one last little prerequisite uh, to beginning our discussion of diabetic retinopathy then is going to be a discussion of the structure of the microvasculature. Okay, and we'll do that in the next video.